All right, this is a little bit of an old school free response problem in how detail oriented it is and in how much it requires you to know the unit circle. So let's start. First of all, f of x is given by sine squared x minus sine x and only on this interval right here. So that's important to note, we're gonna use that. So they want first for you to find the x-intercepts of the function. So that is where the function equals zero. So let's set the function equal to zero and we'll start by factoring out a sine x. Sine x minus one there. Sine x times sine x minus one. So this function will equal zero if sine is equal to zero or if sine is equal to one. On the given interval from zero to three pi over two, sine equals zero at zero and pi and sine equals one at pi over two. So those are the three x-intercepts of our function. Next, we're asked on what intervals the function is increasing. So we need the first derivative for that. So f prime of x, and then we use the chain rule, bring down the two, two times sine x times the derivative of sine, which is cosine, minus the derivative of sine, which is cosine. Then we need to set, we make, room here, we need to set the derivative equal to zero. And when I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and factor out the cosine. So it'll be cosine of x times two sine x minus one. So my zeros of my derivative function will occur where cosine equals zero and where sine equals one half. So cosine equals zero at pi over two. So x equals pi over two and also at three pi over two on this interval. And then sine x equals one half, that happens in the pi over six family. So if this is my unit circle, then here at pi over six and here at five pi over six will be the two spots where sine is equal to one half. So x equals pi over six and five pi over six. So now I'm faced with the need to do a number line analysis. So I'm gonna do a nice long number line. Oops, you know I'm gonna correct that number line because I can't have endpoints of my number line given that I have a closed domain. So I'm gonna stop my number line, or I'm gonna start it at zero and end it at three pi over two. And then the critical points that I'll put on in between are at pi over six, five pi over six, Let's see, I forgot pi over two. So I think that's all of them actually because three pi over two is already an endpoint. So I've got one, two, three, four intervals. And this by the way is f prime, I'm going to name it. So let's talk about whether the derivative, and remember the derivative is this expression. I like to use it in factored form. That will give us the signs for the sign chart. So if we plug in something between zero and pi over six, and this is where we use a little bit of theory, because that's an angle between zero and pi over six. In this section of the unit circle, cosine will be positive, and sine is also positive, but the real question is, is sine greater than or equal to one half? If sine is greater than one half, this expression two sine x minus one will be positive. But if sine is less than one half, this expression will be negative. So in this section, remember that sine comes from the y value. The y value right here is one half. So if we're in a theta value between zero and pi over six, our y value is less than one half, which means I have a positive times a negative or a negative. Next interval is from pi over six to pi over two. So that's right up here, pi over six to pi over two. Still in the first quadrant, so cosine is positive, but now the y value is above this line, so it's above one half, which means that my second factor will also be positive. So I have a positive times a positive for f prime, which will be positive then. Now let's look between pi over two and five pi over six, which is right here. In this segment, Cosine is now negative because we're in the second quadrant. Cosine is negative and our y value is still above one half. So that means our second factor is still positive. So I have negative times a positive or a negative. And then the last section 
down here between 5 pi over 6 and all the way down to 3 pi over 2. We can do this whole group together because cosine will be negative all throughout. In the third and fourth quadrants, cosine is negative. And then your y value, your sine value, will be less than 1 half because this is the 1 half line and any point down below will be a y value of less than 1 half. And so sine will be less than 1 half. So I'm going to have a negative times a negative equals a positive. And the question was, of course, where is f increasing? And that is going to be, they gave it to you right here, between pi over 6 and 5 pi over 2, and between 5 pi over 6 and 3 pi over 2. All right, part C deals with the absolute extrema. To find absolute extrema, you have to compare the function value at the endpoints, the endpoints are at 0 and 3 pi over 2, with the function value at all of the critical points, which are at pi over 6, pi over 2, and there's one more, f of 5 pi over 6. So I'm going to work each of these out, plugging into the original equation here. So f of 0, sine of 0 is 0, so f of 0 is 0. f of 3 pi over 2, well, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So I have negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus a negative 1. So I have 2. f of pi over 6, well, we've already discussed sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So I have 1 half squared is 1 fourth, minus 1 half is negative 1 fourth. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, so I have 1 minus 1, or 0. And sine of 5 pi over 6 is also 1 half. So I have 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, minus 1 half is negative 1 fourth. So the absolute extrema of f, the absolute maximum is 2, and the absolute minimum is negative 1 fourth. It happens to take place at 2x values. But keep in mind, look at the answer key, the absolute extrema are y values.